everyone. I am Akansha and I welcome you all to our channel Lizard Capsules. I am here to talk about a very interesting topic which is monkey selfie case. This case has a major impact on copyright laws. It was shocking to know that a monkey wants to claim copyright over a selfie which he himself clicked. To understand the basics of the case, let's go into what is copyright. Copyright law is a domain of intellectual property rights and it subsists in original artistic dramatic musical artistic cinematograph films and sound recording this means the creator of the original works have exclusive rights on his creation according to the indian copyright act of 1957 copyright means the exclusive right subject to the provisions of the act to do or authorize the doing of any of the following acts in respect of a work or any substantial part thereof namely in the case of cinematograph film to make a copy of the film including a photograph of any image forming part thereof or storing of it in any medium by electronic or other means second to sell or give on commercial rental or offer for sale or for such rental any copy of the film third to communicate the film to the public according to us copyright law the owner of the copyright has a right to exclude any other person from reproducing preparing derivative works distributing performing displaying or using the work covered by copyright for a specific period of time let's have a brief facts about the monkey selfie case so this extraordinary incident happened when the famous photographer mr david slater traveled to a national park in north sulawesi indonesia in july 2011 to take photographs of local wildlife in that region After reaching he started following a troop of monkey to get a rare picture. When he stopped to rest and kept his camera down the monkey Naruto came and picked up his camera and started looking at it. He made the connection between pushing the shutter release button and the change to this reflection in the lens. He managed to click the pictures out of which some were not clear. He then clicked an astonishing selfie from the camera. It is believed that it was once in a lifetime shot of expression of pure joy and self-awareness on the monkey's face. Afterwards, Slater sent that picture to his friend to be published on National Geographic and also published a book where he claimed copyright of the images. but eventually it got published by wikipedia on their website without slater's consent and the picture went viral from there on slater asked wikipedia to remove the picture but wikipedia did not and therefore the suit was initiated between slater and wikipedia in the year 2014 then in september 2015 the campaign group of people for ethical treatment of animals peta sued Mr. Slater in a California court on behalf of Naruto. Peta claimed that the selfie was an outcome from a series of determined and intended actions by Naruto. Peta stated in their argument that Mr. Slater did not assess the actions of Naruto, therefore the photographer is not entitled to the copyright of the picture. The copyright of the picture belongs to Naruto. Then in January 2016 the district court of California dismissed the application stating that Naruto cannot be a copyright holder since he is not a human it is a settled law that a animal do not have any standing in a court of law and therefore cannot sue for copyright infringement to such a decision peta appealed the dismissal in the court of appeals of the 9th circuit However the court affirmed the decision of the district court the parties ended for a settlement Mr Slater agreed for a settlement to pay a quarter of his earnings from the monkey selfie book to charities that protect the habitat of Naruto and other parasitic macaques in Indonesia So now let's move on to the basis of Peta arguments First next friend standing second article 3 standing third statutory standing under the copyright act next friend standing next friend can be defined as a person who appears in the court replacing other who is not competent enough to represent themselves or is a minor they can be regarded as the party to the proceeding neither they are appointed as guardian instead of this they can be considered as the agent of the court 
whose role is to protect the rights of the person who is not competent enough. It was opined that to establish next friend standing, Peter has to show that the petitioner is unable to litigate his own cause due to mental incapacity, lack of access to a court or other similar disability, and the next friend has some significant relationship with and is truly dedicated to the best friend of the petitioner. It is observed that the second requirement was not met in the present case. The court expressly stated that our precedent on a statutory interpretation should apply to court rules as well as statutes. If animals are to be accorded rights to sue, the provisions involved thereon should state such rights expressly. Peta did not claim to have a relationship with Naruto that is any more significant than its relationship with other animals and thus cannot sue Mr. Slater. However, the court proceeded with the merits of the case because Naruto's lack of next friend does not destroy his standing to sue as having a case or controversy under Article 3 of US Constitution. The court is obligated by the Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 17 to consider whether the incompetent parties are adequately protected even when they don't have next friend or guardian. Article 3 Standing Standing basically refers to a particular party's ability to bring in a claim. To satisfy Article 3, there are basically three requirements that a plaintiff must show. First, he has suffered an injury in fact that is concrete and particularized and actual or imminent. Second, the injury is traceable to the challenged action of the defendant. Third, it is likely as opposed to merely speculative that the injury will be redressed by a favorable decision. However, these three essentials do not have a reference in US Constitution. In the present case, the US court referred to a cetacean case and found that the Naruto's lack of next friend did not destroy his standing to sue under Article 3 of US Constitution. Statutory Standing Under Copyright Act Many of the provisions of the copyright law states against the conclusion that animals have statutory standing to sue under the Copyright Act. For humans, the heirs, whether legitimate or not, can inherit the property, including copyright, which involves all humanity and necessarily excluded animals that do not marry and do not have their heirs entitled to property by law. Therefore, it was held that the animals have constitutional standing and not statutory standing to claim infringement. It was also concluded that Naruto's Article 3 standing was independent of Peta's sufficiency as a next friend or as a guardian. Under the holding in Cetacean case, the Copyright Act and the Basic Property Law animals have no such rights. Now, what were the major arguments took by Peta? First, Copyright Act contemplates statutory standing for animals because it permits statutory standing for corporations and unincorporated associations without express authorization for those non-human entities. Second, Cetacean is distinguishable because the statutes at issue in Cetacean represented a waiver of the United States sovereign immunity and such waivers unlike the Copyright Act are narrowly construed. Third, since Naruto is not a party to the settlement and defendants have maintained that Peta does not have next friend standing, Naruto should not be bound by judgments entered because of Peta's action. Fourth, the selfie was an outcome from a series of determined and intended actions by Naruto and Mr. Slater did not assist the actions of Naruto, therefore the photographer is not entitled to the copyright of the picture. The copyright of that picture belongs to Naruto. Related Information and Developments The Compendium 2 of US Copyright Office Practice 1984 described human author as The term authorship implies that for a work to be copyrightable, it must owe its origin to a human being. Materials produced solely by nature, by plants or by animals are not copyrightable. It further described works not originated by a human author as in order to be entitled to copyright registration, a work must be the product of human authorship. 
works produced by mechanical process or random selection without any contribution by a human author are not registerable the compendium of us copyright office practices 2014 and 2017 described the human authorship requirement as the us copyright office will register an original work of authorship provided that the work was created by a human being it further described works that lack human authorship as the office will not register works produced by nature animals or plants likewise the office cannot register the work purportedly created by divine or supernatural beings although the office may register a work where the application or the deposit copies state that the work was inspired by a divine spirit section 619.2 states that the claimant names in the application must be a human being or legal entity that is capable of owning property so this was a brief of monkey selfie case all relevant links are provided in the description box below for your reference i hope this video gave you a clear outline about the case thank you for watching the video please like and subscribe for more